A few weeks ago, we explored the invention of writing by creating our own unique written language. At the period we are at, the earliest writing mediums were just tablets of clay, which are bulky and prone to breakage. But sometime around 3000 BCE, the first form of paper started to be made in Egypt, made from the abundant papyrus plant. This quickly became the new standard for writing documents in the region. In today's video, we're going to attempt to make our own papyrus using some more locally available and abundant plants. And then, as these early inventions paved the way for an early mail system, we're going to test out how these documents can handle being put up against the modern postal service. Everything we use comes from 8,000 generations of collective innovation and discovery. But could an average person figure it all out themselves and work their way from the Stone Age to today? That's the question we're exploring. Each week, I try to take the next step forward in human history. My name is Andy, and this is How to Make Everything. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next step in this journey. According to a supposed ancient Sumerian legend, writing was invented by a king after his courier arrived to deliver a message so out of breath, he was unable to speak. So the next time, the king wrote his message on a clay tablet so it wouldn't be dependent on the messenger's breath. Almost certainly not the actual origin, but this illustrates one of the new abilities inventing a written language unlocks, the ability to record permanent messages and records. In Sumer, this even evolved to the point of clay tablets being enclosed inside clay envelopes, so that secure messages could be sent without anyone else seeing it, or records sealed and not tampered with. So before we move on to the next phase of writing technology, I first want to make a tablet as a comparison. Once the tablet dries, then the envelope is made. To verify the sender, cylinder seals were sometimes used, but it's also believed impressions of a man's fingernail would sometimes be used instead of a seal as a form of signature. Clay tablets have many advantages. First, they are very cheap to make, as even poor quality clay can be used, and since they usually aren't fired, they could be recycled and turned back into clay for the next message. They'd continue to be used in Mesopotamia for many more centuries. However, in Egypt, sometime around 3000 BCE, a new writing material was invented. Made from the inner pith of the papyrus plant, thinly sliced layers of the stem are stacked and combined to form a sheet of paper, held together by the plant's natural glue. Papyrus grew abundantly around Egypt at that time. It had countless uses from boats, baskets, footwear, medicine, and even food. Once abundant, today the plant is actually quite rare. So unable to make it back to Egypt, I went to try and find some similar plants that might yield us some comparable results. Right, we're on the Colorado River near Austin, trying to make some papyrus paper out of this reed plant here. Ideally, you'd use actual papyrus, but can't quite afford a trip to Egypt. So, let's see if these guys can be made to work. In addition to the dwarf palmetto, I also had sorghum and corn I've grown previously, whose stalks and husks may also yield a workable cellulose fiber that might be similar to papyrus. So previously I had an attempt at trying to make papyrus paper using actual papyrus, uh, like a bunch of plants, slaughtered them all, and made this, which uh, is not very paper-like. Still not entirely sure what went wrong. Possibly they weren't big enough, wasn't under enough weight, might not have woven them together correctly. I'm gonna give it another shot, but instead of using actual papyrus and killing a bunch of store-bought plants, I went out to the wild and collected some of a similar plant, a dwarf palmetto we found in Austin that looks pretty similar in terms of having some consistency to its stems. And try and see if that does it. Supposedly you can use a variety of different plants. It doesn't have to be just papyrus. It's just what they had a lot of. I also have some of these sogrum and I have a bunch of leftover stocks that have just been sitting around here. They potentially might also work. See if we can get a better result. Then that the, the pulp of them, it doesn't have as much adhesive factor as the papyrus did. You can try adding a little bit of wheat glue See if that helps hold it all together. The pith of the sorghum stalks ended up being pretty brittle and didn't make great of an option.
the Dwarf Palmetto was much more promising. So after getting it started, I handed it off to one of our new assistants, Kate, so I can move on and get started with the corn husks. Hi, I'm Kate. And what we found worked best was Dwarf Palmetto. Starts out like this, very firm, hard shell. Scrape off that and you get the softer middle, which you then have to soak for a while before you can shave this down to look like this. We're mid-process here. The next step is going to be over several days, taking these strips that have been soaking, pulling them out, and then soak them again until they are thin enough that you can almost see through them. You will hopefully have something as thin as this. These have been soaking in water mixed with wheat paste. And the reason we're using the wheat paste is that papyrus produces its own natural adhesive. So when you press it together and it dries pressed together, it sticks together really well. We are trying to replicate that with the dwarf palmetto in the wheat paste water. And then what you do is you layer them, slightly overlapping along the edges. It's not actually woven like you would think. And then you'll lay a second layer that way. So as they dry together, after several days, it will compress down into a paper thin sheet that looks like that. So yesterday we took our palmetto, it's still a bit tough here, but after all day of rolling it out, it gets a little more flexible and fibrous and spongy, but this is about as thin as I can get it before it starts to disintegrate. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to make a piece of paper with that. It might not be a great writing surface, but it'll be a potentially good painting surface. Tiny canvas. So my suspicion on why these other ones haven't worked and why the papyrus didn't work is that I haven't been able to get like really large strands of it. So using another leftover, another cellulose-based item, the corn husks, I'm gonna try using that. Similar concept. So I have some strips, uh, just gonna kind of lay them out. Form the sheet of paper, and add a little bit of wheat glue to them to help it adhere. This is just wheat mixed in with some water and then heat it up. Beat at it. And some rocks on top of it and uh, let it dry like that for a few days and hopefully we can get a little bit better results. Here's what we got from the Dwarf Palmetto. Not so much paper-like as more basket-like. I'm gonna reclaim it as a canvas and maybe do a little tiny art painting on there. But we did wanna make a control with some properly prepared papyrus. Be more like a, a wide bookmark than <laughs> piece of paper. Yeah, I'm gonna need to scroll because I don't have enough to do a full sheet crisscrossing them. It came from a kit, but we wanted to see what it should look like. As you can see, much more flexible, but it's just unfortunate that we couldn't use papyrus we had sourced ourselves. This is something that you can actually write on, some sort of ancient bookmark. Then back to my corn husk papyrus to see if I was able to yield anything close to the real papyrus. So after letting the corn dry out under weight, I actually did a few different batches and then put the best two together to make a longer sheet and then glue them together. It doesn't adhere very well to itself. We got something that's sort of like papyrus. So of the three, I would say it's probably the closest to an actual functioning piece of paper. These ones have gaps in them that would make it very hard to actually write on. But this is not really papyrus. It's very thick, it's very rough tried smoothing it out like a stone, like they often do with papyrus. And that ended up just kind of loosening a lot more stuff, making it uh, even worse. I'm gonna try writing on it, see if I can send a message and wrap it up in a scroll and send it off and uh, we can give it a shot and see if it works. With the paper, a writing utensil is also needed, pen and ink. So similar to how the Egyptians made their pen, usually out of a reed, I cut one out of bamboo. Then for the ink, I combined soot with an egg yolk and water to make a black ink, and also a red ink using red soil I collected before in Arizona. Then 
In the writings, ancient Egyptian scribes would often write in black and red. With red being used to designate different things, such as names of demons or evil spirits, the start of a new paragraph, to add emphasis, or for punctuation. So I'm going to use my red ink to help designate punctuation. Also worth noting is that thanks to my Discord, our written language is already starting to evolve. This time making some small changes to make it easier to write with a read and simplify it to fewer strokes. As we continue on to other writing technologies, the language will continue to further evolve as we go. Using the ink and reed pen on the corn husk was incredibly difficult. All the textures and ridges made it impossible to get clean brush strokes. To compare, I tried it with a modern piece of paper and had much better luck writing with it. Writing on actual papyrus, I got better results, showing that the flaws were with my pseudo papyrus. Now to tie them up and seal them shut. All right, so I got the scrolls all rolled up and sealed with my custom seal. So I did that just kind of to give an impression. And this is what was historically done with papyrus and such to kind of certify if it's coming from a certain person and that it hasn't been opened, it hasn't been tampered with. Double seals like this would sometimes it have up to like seven of them. And that would be a seal from each person if there's like seven witnesses to a contract. And a hole is punched into the scrolls itself so you can't just slide it off and then take a peek at the document or modify it. Got a, a little crunchy during rolling it, but this definitely worked really well for writing with the authentic pen, the corn husk. Uh, that did not really work at all with the, the actual ink and the pen. It all just kind of bled everywhere and all the inconsistent little uh, bumps in it made it almost impossible to write with. With a Sharpie, a modern ink writing utensil, it, it works decent. It's still pretty hard to write legible with the grooves and the corn husk and everything. And it's pretty brittle, so I'm curious how well it'll handle actually mailing. Back in the day, they'd probably just have a messenger send these out. But we're gonna use it US Postal Service, see how well they fare. Got this guy stamped up. It's got my fingernail impressions as a form of a seal. It takes a whopping 13 stamps, and back then that would basically translate to the amount of weight you'd have to carry around or the amount of bulk. Might have a bunch of scrolls to have to carry, so it would quickly add up if they're all actual tablets, where you can carry a lot more of these. So, different advantages to having papyrus. Uh, to help a little bit, I taped up the tablet. It's gonna be a bit brittle, and I imagine it's gonna shatter, and then I'm gonna get nothing. So I put a little bit of tape around it, just so when it does shatter, it's all in one piece. Include an address in English. I'm not gonna expect the Postal Service to learn my special language. So I think I'm just going to stamp these up, put them in the mail, and see what I get back. The invention of a written language allowed a system of couriers to develop and deliver your written messages across the lands. The system would eventually evolve into the modern postal service, which allows everyone the luxury of a personal courier to send their messages at the mere cost of a stamp. But it's usually designed for more durable modern paper and cardboard. Let's see how well these archaic formats can handle the modern system. All right, so after a few days, the packages all made it through the mail and back to me. Papyrus seemed to be in one piece, surprisingly, but the tablet is shattered in many, many pieces because it was actually held together by the tape, I think, that protected it. And without that, it would have definitely destroyed the internal message. So fortunately, it actually did survive. It is in one piece. The envelope itself is completely shattered. Clearly demonstrates the advantage that papyrus has. I'm surprised how well they came through since they're both somewhat brittle still. They, are, they aren't like actual paper. They're made up of bands of fiber that uh, do break apart and stuff. The seals are all intact, so I can confirm that these messages have not been opened, not been tampered with. Open these guys up. Oh, now it broke. There's the message. <laughs> 
Yeah. This kind of demonstrates the advantages of papyrus head over an actual clay tablet. This guy would have not fully survived the mail had I had to actually ship it. The papyrus has an advantage of being a little bit more sturdier. The corn husk that I did was, I would say it's close, but it's still got room for improvement. It's not quite the same quality as actual papyrus, which turned out pretty good, completely legible. It definitely worked as a piece of paper. So most of these mediums are fairly temporary. The clay is generally not fired, so it's pretty brittle. It'll break. And a lot of the tablets that survived were because it would get accidentally fired through various incidences. For example, the actual message that I wrote on here is a message that was sent during the Bronze Age collapse of one king to another. What all is happening and how much destruction they are facing. It never ended up getting sent. Instead it got sealed away and then when the whole city burned down it ended up getting fired and preserved as a permanent ceramic tablet. So now unlike the first time this message was written, this time it actually made it through the mail and made it to the recipient. It just puts us at the next step in the evolution of writing as we start to get closer to paper. Papyrus isn't paper though, you know it's the origin of the word. Pretty labor intensive and dependent on a crop that only exists in a small part of the world. It became popular for an era, but eventually was replaced by one of the next inventions, which would be parchment, which is made from animal skins. So that'll probably be our next video and the next evolution in written language. But before then, we're gonna do kind of a little bit more topical while we're facing our own societary collapse, like the Bronze Age, not quite. And rather than our cities being burned, it's just us all being isolated in our own apartments and not being able to go to the hairdresser. So in our next video, we're gonna take a little look at the hairstylings and technologies behind self-grooming, trying to get myself a haircut using some Bronze Age technology. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Thanks to all of our supporters on Patreon, currently under quarantine and wrapping this video up. Uh, we'll be for the next few weeks, as I'm sure most of you are. So stay safe out there, wash your hands, and take care.